Thank you, Joel. Um, next up, we have Michelle Balk from the DNR talking about the white wastewater permits and how that's going to affect us and what's needed. Um, Michelle Balk is a wastewater field supervisor from Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources, Northern Region. She joined the DNR in 2011, and since that time, she's worked with her team to protect and promote healthy waters of the state across the northmost 18 counties. In her free time, Michelle enjoys traveling, gardening, kayaking, and cross-country skiing. She lives in Spooner, Wisconsin, where her husband, Adam, and, and their two skigorging dogs, which we looked up because we didn't know what that was. That's where the dogs pull you on skis, and maybe you can tell us a little more about it, Michelle. Thank you. Hi, um, I'm Michelle Balk, and it's, I've, as I've heard, it's pronounced ski joring, but yes, um, we enjoy having the dogs do some of the work too while we go uh, out cross country skiing. I'm going to see here if I can share my screen. Um, see how this shows up for you. All right, does that show just the slides or is that um, slides and notes? Uh, currently we see the preview screen for the PowerPoint. It's not actually in presentation mode for us. Oh. Yeah, uh, if you wanna stop sharing and then choose the other option when sharing so we don't see all your notes. Fair enough. Let me see right, what thank I can you. Here. That fix it? Yep, perfect. Awesome. Glad to hear it. All right. So as it was said, I'm Michelle Balk. I'm the wastewater field supervisor for the northern region of the wastewater uh, program here in Wisconsin. And I'm here to talk with you a little bit about the wastewater permitting for maple syrup uh, producers. So uh, in January of 2019, the Department of Agriculture, Trade, and Consumer Protection updated their document entitled Rules for Maple Syrup Processing. In it, they included two new mentions of wastewater. Wastewater with detergents, also known as gray water, shall not be disposed of directly onto the ground. And if a facility is disposing of gray water directly onto the ground, they must contact a DNR wastewater specialist to receive a permit. These two new inclusions necessitated a method of permitting a maple syrup gray water, which the Department of Natural Resources set about um, establishing. But first I'd like to give you just a little bit of background on the permitting process. The 1972 Clean Water Act authorized the EPA to regulate point source pollution to waters of the United States through the National Pollutant Discharge Elimination System, or NPDES program. It also allowed the states to take on permitting authority under EPA approval, and Wisconsin undertook that authority as the WPDES permitting program. There's two main types of permits which are issued by the program. Individual permits, which are tailored to the specific situation situations of a discharger and are sent individually for public review and comment. And then there's general permits, which are designed to cover multiple facilities under one permit when they perform similar operations, produce the same types of wastewater streams, employ similar wastewater treatment operations, or are subject to similar effluent limitations and monitoring requirements. Essentially, it forms something of a box to simplify the permitting process. And if you fit in it, you can be covered. There's an additional benefit with general permits that the limits and the per that the limits are set and that the permits are public noticed at the permit issuance, which means they can be applied to the facilities with a lot less processing time required. While most general permits cover a specific industry or a waste type, 
it was noted that a number of discharges were being applied for that had a minimal risk for environmental impact. In 2019, a general permit was drafted to cover these types of discharges, which include recurring outdoor washing, uh, non-contact cooling waters from uh, things like canning and packaging industries, uh, air conditioning condensate, uh, the, the water coming off of an air conditioning unit, and maple syrup gray waters. So how do you know if you need to apply for the low impact general permit as a maple syrup producer? The permits are required for maple syrup generators who are both regulated by DAPCAP and that discharge reverse osmosis wastewater to the groundwater. There's a couple of key points in there. So our regional permit drafter has put together a help sheet for maple syrup producers, which includes a flow chart to help clarify if a syrup producer falls into this category. And I've included parts of her chart here. So the first piece is I am required to have a food processing plant license from DACCAP. If this doesn't apply to you, um, if you're a smaller producer or uh, have other reasons for an exemption on that, no general permit is needed at this time. However, if you are covered uh, by DACCAP, uh, then uh, we move on to point two. I use reverse osmosis to produce maple syrup. If you only use the boil method or other concentration methods, you also don't need to have a general permit at this time. But if you use reverse osmosis, we need to look a little bit closer at where your water goes, which brings us to point three. My reverse system Reverse osmosis system discharges to, the first option here is a surface water. In this case, it gets a little bit more complicated and you may need to apply for a different permit. So if you fall into this category, please contact your general permit representative. Uh, their information can be found by searching for general permits on the DNR website, dnr.wisconsin.gov. But if you discharge instead to a septic tank, a holding tank, or a sanitary sewer, no general permit is needed at this time. However, if you discharge to groundwater, either reverse osmosis water and wastewater, or just the reverse osmosis water alone, congratulations, you qualify for the general permit. So how do you apply for this? Um, First step is that you need to submit a notice of intent. This is something of an application form for coverage and it has a few supporting documents that need to be included, such as oil and grease results for a sample of reverse osmosis wastewater. If we don't need the actual sample sent to the DNR. What we need instead is the sample to be sent to a commercial lab and the sample to be tested for oil and grease hexane. And then that lab support uh, report should be included with your NOI. If you haven't sampled and you need to apply for coverage this year, please contact your general permits rep. They'll help you get a sample taken as soon as your system is up and running for the new season. The application also needs a narrative discharge observation which is essentially a statement that none of the narrative requirements needed in the permit, such as odor, foam, metals, those kind of things, uh, that none of them exceed the screening values given in the permit. This is based off of both visual observations of the wastewater and knowledge of the facility's operation. If there's not an instance where there's risk of any metals getting introduced, then the likelihood of metals being present is minimal. We also need documentation of any additives used in the water treatment process or any um, additive that might be present in the wastewater as well. Things like detergents or chemicals that might be discharged in the wastewater uh, as it's uh, processed after the reverse osmosis system. There is a worksheet available to help with this, which can be found at the link I've provided here. I'll pause for just a second in case anybody wants to jot that down. Otherwise, it can be found on the DNR website as well. And the final piece that we need is a best management practices plan. 
which is designed to prevent or minimize the release of pollutants from the system. It's a combination of um, erosion prevention and chemical introduction prevention. And to help you build a plan, we have another handy form, which can be found at the provided link here. As I said before, these forms can also be searched for on the DNR website, or you can uh, contact your general permits representative to help you find them. So once you've applied for and received your low impact general permit coverage, what happens next? Basically, you need to operate under the permit requirements by discharging wastewater and additives that were approved and preventing runoff from the uh, discharge area. We also need you to follow your BMP, the best management uh, practices plan, and notify the department if there's any changes that have been made to that plan. And we need you to keep a log of the narrative discharge requirements in the permit. Beyond that, the only requirement is that you reapply for the permit when it's reissued if you're still in production. The current permit version was signed February of 2020, so it will be in effect until February of 2025. Letters will be sent to permit holders uh, when they need to reapply, and we'll, the letters will contain information on how to reapply. And that's it. Um, if there's any questions, feel free to ask uh, here as we're uh, on this call. Otherwise, I also have my email available. Or it, as you can see here, we've got the list of contacts. These are the general permit contacts that would be available to assist uh, based on which county you are present in. We appreciate you coming on. Um, we're kind of looking to see if any questions pop in. Um, I know this has kind of been one of those uh, regulations or changes that we've been kind of scared of and I appreciate you guys taking the time to figure out, help us understand what we need to do. We do have one question. Are the test results still emailed to Sherry Snowbank? Um, for most of, for the Northern region counties, yes. Um, she's, she, uh, she and Layla Jenkins share the Northern region. Um, so either one of those is a valid person to send those results to, uh, for other counties, again, please reference the slide that I had up. Um, and I believe we're going to be sharing, I can send my slides to, uh, be shared in the future as well. Otherwise just search for general permits on the DNR website. Thank you. Uh, another question, can we apply on the website now or do you have to wait for a paper application? Um, the notice of intent is available online and you can apply through that. Uh, some of the documentation like the lab slip and such, um, they'll, you'll be getting most likely hard copies or a digital copy and then send that in. Um, but we're moving towards having everything digitally completed. So I believe it should be able to accept all of those pieces digitally at this time. All right, we got one more popped in. For clarification, a small producer that are not regulated by DATCAP, but run RO machines, reverse osmosis machines, are they still required to get this permit? Nope. Um, both of those conditions need to be met. Essentially, we recognize that you guys are good stewards of the environment. You live and work in those communities um, and want to maintain good environmental standards. So we recognize that you are already most likely taking good productive actions to minimize chemical introductions for those smaller systems um, and don't want to add any burden on you guys. Um, and I believe that a lot of these things are on our website, our wismaple.org. We have listed under hot topics. Um, so there is some information there too for those listening that are looking for a way to find it. Um, I don't see anything else coming through here. Do you have anything else you'd like to add, Michelle? Um, only other piece would just be if you do have any lingering questions or anything else pops up, like I said, I'm more than happy to assist. Otherwise, I'd also direct you to just uh, search general permits on our website, dnr.wisconsin.gov, 
and that'll help you find this list of contacts and anybody on that list will be happy to help as well. Sounds good. Thank you very much.